Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, and welcome to another episode of Inside High Rated DB, which is the live commentary series where you just hop into a random game and just check out what's happening. So we're going to see a fresh game here. It's going to be, oh god, XX2, I can't read this sideways, pro for you homie xx with exclamation marks at the end versus Maha Siswa ITB. Uh, Alright, so we got 1161 versus 1001 rating. I took off the overlay on the side here and just moved my social media stuff to the bottom left corner. Hopefully that looks a little bit better. Actually, I just noticed it's a little bit off-center. Uh, oops. Well, uh, we'll actually just move that real fast over here uh, while they go ahead and, I guess, get started. But yeah, uh, you guys do seem to be enjoying the series, and I've been enjoying live commentating as well. Uh, hopefully this will give me a good practice to... Um, you know, prepare for the upcoming LCS. Because like I mentioned, I do intend on commenting over the LCS matches live, especially for uh, day two when they go into like top cut and the later rounds of Swiss and all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, this should be a pretty good kind of... Oh gosh, looks like uh, the opponent's just AFK here. Uh, might have to find a new match. <laughs> Hopefully they'll come back within due time. It's always weird to me like whenever people like AFK at the beginning, because you have to click ready in order to actually join the, up the game to begin with. So it's like, what could you possibly be doing, be doing in that like two second interval between like pressing ready and then doing the RPS? Doesn't really make any sense to me. But, you know, I guess we'll wait and find out. Are there any judges online is the real question. There's no judges online, so this judge call is not going to do anything. Uh, well, we'll give it another like... 30 seconds, and if nothing happens, we will just go and find a new game, I guess. So, hope you guys are all doing well. It is now December, which I can't believe it is. Uh, it, feels, it feels like it was... I don't know, it feels like the last part of this year flew by really quickly. And I'm sure many people were happy about that, because, uh, you know, 2020 was... Uh, let's just say not the best year, but... Gotta right, continue on. All right, it's been like 30 seconds. I'm just gonna try and find a new game here. Uh, hopefully, all right, we'll see. I, I had like um, a list of people. Okay, so this one's also a new game. All right, so let's go ahead and just hop into this game. <laughs> it's gonna be Big Nate 0097 with 745 versus uh, Dagger, uh, 1459 rating. It looks like Dagger is on Virtual World. So we can't necessarily say for sure what happened, but we do know Foolish Goods resolved. Um, oh, we went for the Vermilion play to pop itself, which adds back a little. Wow, that's a pretty common play um, nowadays. Uh, E-Tele was used. So that probably got Lulu. And I think Gigi probably sent... Uh, probably sent Lulu. I'm not sure how... Chuche got in grave with uh Lalo. I'm not sure how both of them got to grave. But somehow both were sent to grave. So we'll just see what happens uh next. Because again, I just did not join the game from the very start, as you guys can see. Uh so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and see Lalo that's gonna target the Qinglong. And we're gonna see what happens next. It sets it up pretty well for Claw Castle. Uh, gonna send Nian, that can bring back Gigi. Can also bring back Nian if you want to. Not really sure if that's like the best play to bring back Nian here, but definitely can if you want to recycle. Uh, gonna go for probably Claw Castle. Could go for Shenshen as well. Yeah, Claw Castle, bring back Vermilion to go for VFD. We've seen this a lot more where Vermilion pops itself to add back uh, Lalo, because Lalo is like uh, one of the better ones to have when you have like a face up continuous spell or trap just because it plays on like Nibiru and stuff too. Uh, gonna go for Calamities, alright. Uh, and then gonna use Nibiru and a main phase. So there goes kind of like the follow up there. I don't imagine there's a whole lot that could have been done anyways beyond that. Like you, sometimes you just have to play into Nibiru with this deck. Uh, but we're gonna see probably GG resolving end phase. So it's gonna be just this back row and uh, possible hand trap. So we'll see what happens. Oh, you know what probably, you know how probably uh, this got engraved is uh, probably, okay, so the player's probably Foolish Burial to send Qinglong. Qinglong grab uh, Gigi maybe, and then pitch Chuche. 
and then go with e telly from there okay that that's probably what happened all right i was able to kind of infer that after kind of thinking about it a little bit more all right looks like it's gonna be dragon link all right so uh, a bit more of a meta match than some of the other matchups in the series so far but that's not too bad either i'm sure there's a fair share of you guys who still enjoy watching the meta game i actually do enjoy watching and commentating the meta it's just that i don't really i'm not like super keen on playing right now funnily enough all right so chaos space gonna pitch collapse serpent that's gonna grab a wyvern burster so then gonna banish the collapse serpent that's gonna summon the wyvern burster then you can chaos space so yeah this is gonna have to really get quite far it looks like um, it looks like the Lala was added back to hand, so we'll see. Oh, I missed it, but I think uh, Wu was banished off Qinglong, I guess. That's what happened to negate the Nibiru. I didn't actually pay attention, but I'm just going to assume that's what happened. Uh, quick launch going to be the follow-up next. That's going to grab Tracer. So this hand looking quite strong. Again, just depends on what. Uh, disruptions there are because uh, not a whole lot of virtual world engine cards on board right now. This could definitely be a Chuche though. So he's gonna go straight for ooh Chaos Ruler. Okay, so maybe this isn't Dragon Link. So yeah, Chunk One Chaos Ruler, Chunk Two Wyvern Burster. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. Uh, I really actually do hope this is Game One, <laughs> uh, and I didn't actually randomly join, you know, later on. Hopefully, you'll know if you see this video. <laughs> All right, oh, so this is Orcus, Rocket Orcus, yes! Oh, I love this deck, you guys know. Uh, he's playing Instant Fusion too, which is pretty interesting, but gonna pick up the Gearsu here, and we have a Brass Bombard as well. See, the Chaos Space package is so, so insane in this deck. Uh, gonna go ahead and summon out Gearsu. That's gonna go ahead and send a copy of Orcus Nightmare, probably. Could also send, I guess, a World Wand if you have like Nightmare in hand and you wanna like Bombard it out, but looks like that's not the case. All right, so... Going for the Nightmare. Oh, this is cool. Now I'm excited. It's not Dragon Link. Let's go. <laughs> That's actually one of the cool things, too, is that you guys will be able to see from the title of the video what the decks are. And then you're going to be like, wait, Dragon Link? Wait, what? <laughs> and then uh, here we are, I guess. That's one of the beauties of live commentating. We don't know until <laughs> we don't know until we get there. Going to go for Galatea with the Nibiru and the uh, Gusu here. Obviously can't use the tokens because you have monsters on your board. But... We are able to now go for a whole slew of Orcus plays, going for a Degusu straight away, possibly to try and force out the Chuche. That's going to go ahead and send, so now Chuche won't be able to really do anything because Degusu can just protect. And then after that, you can like still go Galatea. You can like set up for your Babel plays. Uh, you can do a whole like host of things. Uh, it's pretty interesting that we didn't see... Oh, he's going to send away the token. So is he going to go for an OTK? Possibly. I mean, you do have Chaos Ruler to be able to like bring itself back. You can like Nightmare... You can target the ding, you can send wand, and then you can go for like uh, wand bring back, you can go Galatea, and then you can bring back Chaos Ruler. That's like what, 3k, 34, 18? Which is actually 82, so that's going to be enough for game. So barring exactly Nibiru in hand, uh, this will be the end of the game because Chuche won't matter against Dingirsu. So this is really cool. So wand going to go ahead and bring back the Nightmare. Plus we still have Babel just in case we have Orcus in hand. It makes me wonder like what these cards in hand could be because there were no hand traps besides Nibiru. Um, but I mean maybe that was the only hand trap he opened. Definitely not out of the realm of possibility. So yeah, I imagine you just go for Galatea and just go up. He's going to go battle phase. Maybe he has Gizmic in hand. We'll see. Uh, going to attack for 100. And then... 3k34. So this is notably not game if this is the only line of attacks. Is it going to be a Gizmic? No. Okay. So he actually missed lethal. Um, he was already playing well into Nibiru. So yeah, he definitely missed the fact that he could just bring back the Chaos Ruler by banishing Tracer. Or like, whatever, Dark and Light. Uh, yeah, definitely could have had game there. Just making sure, because like, that would have been... I'm just going to do the math again. 48 plus 34 is 82, yeah. So, oh, going to be using Gamma on the Galatea. So I guess it wouldn't have been game because, uh, like, something would have gotten Gamma along the way. But Galatea hit, getting Gamma is kind of big. Surprised I didn't protect with Dengusu either. Uh, maybe he's just, like, wanting to preserve this with, uh, 
to play around like Chuche, perhaps. Kind of interesting. So what uh, the virtual world player could do actually at this point is like they could Chuche their own driver, I guess, if you want to put it in grave. But we are going to see Chaos Ruler being used. And we'll see what the follow up ends up being after the fact. Pretty interesting. So he wasn't dead anyways, so that's uh that's good to see that he got the damage in at least. Ended up working out. Gonna banish to summon out Collapse Serpent. Yeah, he hadn't done that either. So he actually could just summon the Collapse Serpent as well. Like on top of that board of nightmare and stuff. Cause it was what? Wyver Burster one, Tracer two, Ruler three, Gal four. Yeah, it was like way beyond the Biru. Uh wait. So he banished? I'm a little confused here. So he banished a light and a dark to summon this. But then... Okay, okay, okay. So I guess he's not summoning Collapse Serpent. Yeah, I don't really know what happened there. Because <laughs> he had Collapse Serpent in hand, right? It was added off the Wyvern Burster. And he chaos based away the Collapse Serpent, so he didn't begin with it. So what's happening here? Yeah, what is he targeting with Chuche? Okay, all right. I was gonna say I thought it, I thought he was saying his opponent couldn't like set this or something, and I was very confused. I was reading the chat, but no, he's he's like, oh, he can't target the back row with Chuche, so he's gonna target the ding, and that's gonna obviously protect. Yeah, it was pretty clear that this was gonna be Chuche, just given the way that things lined up. But we know how he has a Lao in hand, so these guys are actually gonna have to get him there. Um, it's pretty interesting that like none of the initial plays got gammaed. So if our Rocket Orcus player just summoned a uh, Collapse Serpent on top of that board with Nightmare, Ding, and Cash Ruler, that would have been the extra 1800 necessary to make game there. So there was a myriad of different ways. Um, and that would have like made the lack of gamma there actually pretty big. So pretty interesting. Now we'll see what the follow up is here from Virtual World. Oh, a Desire's picked up off the top. That is huge here. Uh, we'll see what that ends up... Oh, and the Imperial Order. Okay. So now he's just going to have to get there off the back of this Lao Lao, which isn't horrible. The thing is that sending Ching Long won't really do anything. You can, like send Shu Che and try and level modulate some more. You just recycled one, although it could have been banished off the Desire's too. But he is going to send the Ching Long anyway. It could bring back the Zhizhi and then bring back the Nian by its own effect. So you can, like maybe go for I guess Stardust Charge. Kind of interested to see. So this could be a nine synchro. This could be a six synchro. Could be a rank three. And he didn't send Chuche, so it's possible that the others are banished. Or maybe he just want to go for a different play. Yeah, you could like definitely go Charge and then use Qinglong. That could work too. Because then you can like go uh, Wu Wu and then search another virtual world. So yeah, definitely not out of this game from virtual world. Even with that desire is getting Imperial ordered. So we'll see what the play ends up being here. But looks like he's going to go for maybe a croc draw instead of a charge warrior draw. It's also fair. Yep, that's going to draw one. And then you can use... Oh, the Veiler on the croc! Big! That makes it so that this Qinglong is not going to be able to be used here. Oh, that is going to hurt quite a lot. And now you can like banish the Qinglong anyways just to get the second one in the banish zone to enable the Chuche. I don't think that's going to be enough though. Like this will get banished because it was brought back via its own effect. But if your opponent has like any normal summonable monster... Well no, they have Nightmare in Grave anyway, it doesn't matter. So... Yeah, like Nightmare can send Symbol that can bring back Gal. Uh, yeah, th there's like all manner of game if this isn't dealt with. Okay, gonna use the Qinglong instead it, on the field. That's probably better than just banishing the Qinglong to do nothing. Um, so it's gonna go ahead and banish the Lelo. And then gonna use the... Uh, so this is targeting Ding. And I'm gonna use the Chuche. Wait. Oh, he passed. I didn't even notice. Okay, so he's gonna just reserve the uh, Chuche here. Which is fair enough. So we'll see how he navigates through his board. This is the only interruption he has to play against. 
And all he has to do is present 1500 damage. So you got Nightmare. You got you can also like bring back Yusuf with Nightmare if you want to. But the World Wand is already banished. So he's gonna start off by summoning Collapse Serpent. That's gonna banish the effect of Ailer. Uh, we'll see what possible removal spells he plays. Or removal to like tools just in the extra deck. No one's summoning Chaser afterward. You could go for Savage if you play it. Uh and I do I would recommend playing Savage if you're playing the Rocket Package. It's gonna go battle phase here. Uh the seems yeah, this is going to be the end of the game. I'm like, it doesn't matter what gets popped, because you just kill the board. Alright, so we're going to see Rocket Orcus, and that was game one, thankfully, so I don't have to go fishing for another game and wasted all this time recording. <laughs> but we are going to see Rocket Orcus take game number one here, and that is very, very fascinating. I do really love this variant of Orcus. I think it is tremendously fun to play, but also just has a lot of res resiliency. I haven't really tested it since Phantom Rage came out, but uh, yeah, look, look in here to be pretty good. So we'll see what happens in the future games. I am quite excited to see, to see this deck and to cast it. If you guys are enjoying this live commentary and the series in general and just this video, uh, definitely be sure to give the video a like as well as you know subscribe to the channel if you are new here or just enjoy this style of video. But yeah, this matchup should be fascinating. Now, Shen Shen could definitely pose some problems um, if... Like, you link away all your Orcus from your field. Thankfully, it doesn't work from main deck to grave. At least, thankfully, for the Rock Orcus player's sake. Um, but VFD, also just a huge, huge problem. <laughs> so, gotta open some way to deal with that. We are going to be seeing Virtual World, of course, go second. Or, sorry, first. Whoa. Go first. Oh, I guess basically going second, because opting to pass. Or maybe being forced to pass. Uh, gonna be firing off the Lancia, though, in the draw phase here. Uh, quite strong, although again, one of the best things about Rocket Orcus is that you can still, you know, make some plays happen if you draw enough of your uh, Dragon Engine, depending if you play like all the ravines and stuff. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen my Rocket Orcus uh, deck profile and like just a series of videos, I have a comment tutorial on that deck as well. Uh, definitely go check that out. I'll probably put a card up there somewhere in the top right corner if you guys do want to check this out. It's a really, really cool build. But we'll see what the play ends up being. It's going to be tough and under Lancia. Uh, quick launch, though, going to be the play. That's a very strong start. I'm going to grab a drink of water real fast. All right, so quick launch. Going to be summoning out Tracer. Uh, Tracer going to be then linked away for a copy of Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon effect. That's going to search for a Boot Sector launch. So you can go for the single card uh, Chaos Ruler here, of, of course, which is very nice. Plus, we still have our normal summon available. Striker Dragon going to target itself and the uh, Tracer. Well, I don't know if you guys heard that crack. That was uh, nasty. Uh, we're going to carry on here. I'm uh, going to go ahead and activate the Boot Sector launch. That is going to summon out the Tracer from hand. Tracer going to target the Boot Sector. That's going to go for Recharger. You could also go for like a 1 Negate Borload Savage. I mean, considering your opponent bricked, that like isn't a horrible option here. I would actually consider it. You could also just try and set up with a Chaos Ruler. I would. Not fall to Mel for going for that play. Yep. It's just so much value here. Even though you can't like use your Orca stuff right away, you'll just have a critical mass of stuff. Oh, look at that. Alright, free wide reverse to the hand. You have Crescendo that you can use during your opponent's turn potentially. Just to get an extra resource like you can add Gearsu. And that is very, very strong. He's playing return too, which is quite interesting. Good normal summon Gearsu afterward. Alright, that is gonna go ahead and send a copy of probably Nightmare. Alright, so I do wonder what the end board is going to be. Sending Bombard, in fact. Uh, can't use it this turn, but that's probably just for next turn then. So this tells me that he likely, of course, has a Nightmare in hand already. Uh, let's see if he plays like Masquerina plus a way to enable it. We'll see what happens. I guess you got to go Masquerina. Well, no, then you can't really do anything with like the 
crescendo there. You could still go for it if you have a way to if you have to make it maybe a Gizmek or a hard drawn Babel perhaps. Alright, gonna use Barricade. That can add back the root sector, and that gets rid of the wand from hand too. That's really cool. So going to set a card, end phase, so you can add back the boot sector, which is really good at being able to just bring back your uh, your rockets if your board gets cleared. I'm gonna set one and pass. So we know the card one card in hand is a boot sector. Another card is wyvern burster. You can infer a third card is probably nightmare. So that leaves only one hand trap max probably. Okay, so we're gonna see virtual and activate Qinglong, and then use Lili to target the Qinglong. I always like checking just to see like who's in Watcher's chat. Uh, my curiosity gets the best of me. That's gonna double foolish Nian Yan and Chuche, and then summon itself to the board. Do we have another virtual world name in in uh, hand? That is the question. Normal summoning Nian that can trigger the other Nian in Grave. So we can go for a level six, a level nine. Yeah, we can go for a level 6 or 9, or a rank 3, or we can level modulate to make a rank 6. Those are our options. Hmm. I wonder if, like, Fan Fan could be maybe good here, but, eh. Like, I guess you can hit Bombard if you're reasonably expecting your opponent to have a, what's it called, Nightmare in hand, but it doesn't seem like the most ideal play. Alright, gonna be overlaying here. Maybe is it for a break sword? Try uh, try and force the back row and get the chain on grave. Fair. Break sword gonna be targeting. Uh, probably chain on the set. I would imagine. Makes the most sense to me. Gonna impermit. I like that because that prevents this from going to grave. So now we'll see what other virtual worlds, if any, are lurking in the hand. Because if not, this is going to be a battle phase. Yeah, going to be hitting in for 28 damage. Or 2800. So. We're going to see Zeus. And then... Maybe just a pass back? If there's another Lancia, that will definitely complicate things. So we'll see. Otherwise, you have Wyvern Burster in hand, so that's going to be the eventual light for Chaos Ruler to come back. And you'll be able to use a whole slew of things, for example, this Orcus Crescendo in the end phase and grab a Girisu. And at this point, you would just monumentally ahead if your opponent doesn't have some like big push to be able to stop you. Oh, and there is a second Lancia, I figured, because like, you know, what could be what could possibly be in a virtual world player's hand if it's not virtual world cards? It's gotta be hand traps, right? So yeah, there's another Lancia, and that's gonna, you know, put a halt to the push quite quickly here. You can see the <laughs> unimpressed emoji face. Not emoji, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're gonna see... Not a whole lot. You can't Wyvern Burst here, you can't Chaos Ruler, but you can use the Boot Sector that we know is added back to summon both of these back. And this can go for a uh, Barricade. So that could immediately force out the Zeus here. Then after that, you can go for like a gear suit, I guess, but you just don't have... Oh man, just not having Orcus plays is really rough. This actually turned around, that Lancia was so big. Because not only does that buy him a turn, but it allows him to go for the Zeus to get Chingo Grave, so it's guaranteed follow-up. Yeah, Savage, and that's going to force out the Zeus. So it really is going to depend on what these cards in uh, Nate's hand are in order to actually facilitate a follow-up. Because we know one card in hand is gear suit. Another card is Wyvern Burster. Um, again, we can infer the third card is something that you want to summon off Brass. So likely a, uh, a Nightmare. Well, it could be a symbol, I guess. Uh, but yeah, here comes the Gear Sue. Now this actually isn't too bad. Because you can make at least like Gala Ding. I'm gonna send Symbol here. You can like use Gear Sue to summon out tokens. And then you can like go Link Rebo, Galatea, Dengirsu, send away Zeus, and then attack over the token. Probably the best you can reasonably ask for. It's a shame that there aren't there is nothing banished for Galatea to recycle. Having uh having Babylon Field would be extremely, extremely strong. But yeah, it looks like it's gonna be just a very minimal Orcus setup. It really sucks to have to play against Lancia twice in a row.
Hmm, gonna be thinking here. I do wonder what other generics are played in the extra deck of his. Also wondering what these remaining cards in hand could be. For both players, that is. This game got very, very interesting because if there's not enough defense for Orcus here, Virtual World can't actually run away with the game. Just needs any Virtual World card. Even then, there's still Nian Engraved too. So like, you can just search a 3 and then go from there. You also have Chuche Engraved to like level modulate. So he's going to go Battle Phase. It's going to clear the token. And then you can go for main phase 2. You can go Gal into Ding. Didn't really matter which order you did it, I suppose. It was already still uh, in the Nibiru range. Because like 1, 2, Gyusu 3, Token 4, 5, Link Rebo 6, Gal 7. Or, well, Gal was after battle phase, but it was six summons. Uh, Gallant and, and then Ding, that's going to send away the Zeus. And then, probably just a pass here, unless there's another back row. There is a back row, okay, so this could be an Imperm. We saw Imperial Order game one, too. So that could be a factor as well to consider. Oh man, a top deck Babel, that is insanely strong. Okay, that changes the game entirely, so... Now we have Symbol, we have Brass as well, but there is no way to reliably just get this thing in a grave. So gonna use Qinglong here from Virtual World. Man, where's Gravity Controller when you need it? <laughs> Gravity Controller is dark, I do believe. <laughs> Not that you would play it like for this exact scenario, but man, it just so happened that would have been perfect here. All right, so Qinglong gonna be searching a copy of Lulu, getting rid of Talents. And then, oh my gosh, the city. Wow, both these players top decking really, really well here. So that can uh, activate Chuche directly from the deck. And that can take care of the Babel just in case like you want to clear stuff later. Because right now, the Babel isn't actually that imposing if there isn't anything in Graveyard of value to bring back. Oh, but, oh my gosh, this is insane. <laughs> so the Lulu targeting the Chuche and then Twin Twister being chained to hit the Chuche. Wow, this is an insane, insane match here. Wow, we okay. Uh, yeah. So, Lulu is gonna return a hand now. You can still normal it and go for Nian, and there's still Chuche left in grave. So it's not over yet. Not over yet. All right, we're gonna see that exactly happen. That's like the only real play, actually. So, not really anything surprising. Uh, we could see. Uh, now these are both tuners, and we went through break sword already. So, 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 so. Um. Oh, does he play Jaja? That would be quite crazy. Oh, he's gonna go for Bamboozle and Gossip Shadow. Fair enough. Oh, that's really rough though. This is a once per turn, right? So, yeah, it's yeah. I don't think that's gonna be enough to stop Orcus. No more Lancias. All right. A little bit surprising he didn't at least try and go for some things during the end phase. Um, like this could have tried to send Gizmek. I mean, you don't mind too much if you. Uh, maybe he just didn't want to give his opponent an extra draw. That's fair enough. Uh, okay, so what you can do is... Let me think about this. I'm just going to read Gossip Shadow and Nightmare real quick. Okay, yeah, so what you can do is like you can attack, and then in the damage step you can activate Nightmare. Uh, and then that can beat over the Gossip Shadow. Alright, so he's going to banish the Bombard, not to use its effect, but to summon out the Wyvern Burster. This really just depends on like how much you want to keep them off of the draw. Now, there's not too many cards that can be drawn off this Gossip Shadow that are immediately just going to, uh, you know, stop your turn unless if it really is just a third Lancia. But we do see Galatea being summoned here and then going for Cloud Serpent. Like you have many ways to force this out, and then you can just go for like you have this engrave, um, and then you have. Just Nightmare, Wand, Symbol. You have all three of these. Jeez. That is just actually nasty. Uh, I wonder if he cited out Return. Uh, Alright, so we're going to see Dingyusu. Oh, wait, no, sorry. We saw the Return this game. So, yeah, definitely not. I don't think you're playing more than one of this card. Alright, so Dingyusu is going to be changed to draw one card via the Gossip Shadow. Now, this draw would have to be uh, maybe like a Nibiru. I don't know. 
This is the third summon after all. So we could go for Chaos Ruler, and then we could go for Nightmare, and then just do a whole bunch of other things. Oh, but it looks like it's going to be possibly a concession here. It is! And just like that, we see Rocket Orcus take a 2-0 victory over Virtual World. What a crazy, crazy matchup here. That is really nice to see. I'm so happy that uh, Rocket, or Rocket Orcus is not only seeing play, but it's you know doing well. You know, I just think that this deck has a lot of really powerful tools going for it. I'm um, just got a lot of extension. And you saw, like, even though we got Lancia twice, it ended up not really mattering in the long term. Now, to be fair, the Virtual World player also didn't open up ideally. But like that whole series of exchanges where we saw, you know, like the Babel and be like, oh, that could really matter based on like how this thing used to get dealt with. And then the Kowloon top deck as well as the Twin Twister to respond to it. That is really, really awesome. I'm very glad I got to hop into this one. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like or any thoughts or feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more competitive video content. If you want to, you can follow me on all social media platforms or uh, support me via Patreon or TCG player. All through links in the description as always. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.